today I got something really special for you guys. I've been looking forward to this for months and now the time has finally arrived to tell you all about the 5mm SMC XW from Pentax. So don't go anywhere because this is going to be worth it. Hi, I'm Orkan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. Pentax is a brand with a rich history in the field of imaging and optics. It was originally established as the Asahi Optical Joint Stock Corporation in 1919 in Japan. The company initially focused on manufacturing spectacle lenses and other optical devices. In the mid-20th century, Pentax gained prominence for its innovations in the camera industry and now the Pentax brand became synonymous with high quality cameras and lenses, earning a reputation for durable and reliable equipment. The latest change in the company's history being the acquisition by Ricoh Company LTD in 2011. It now operates inside the Ricoh Imaging subdivision. While Pentax is mostly known for its camera technology, the company also designs and produces impressive astronomical equipment some of which you probably already heard of. I'm talking about the XW lineup of eyepieces. It consists of no less than 10 eyepieces with focal lengths ranging from 3.5 to 40 mm. The features shared across the whole lineup are a generous 20 mm of eye relief, a very wide apparent field of view, great lens coatings and a JIS class 4 weatherproofing. Today I have the 5mm version with me and when I ordered the eyepiece it came in this nice looking box that reminds me a bit of the packaging objective lenses for cameras come in. Inside we find a semi-transparent plastic cylinder and by Unscrewing the two halves of the container, we gain access to the eyepiece inside. The one and a quarter inch 5mm XW features a 70 degree wide apparent field of view, 20 mm of eye relief and a 6.2 mm field stop. Taking a closer look, we find a large lens at the top paired with a nice rubber eye guard that can be raised by a smooth twisting mechanism. Removing the eye guard reveals an external M43 thread for directly attaching the eyepiece to various equipment pieces like cameras. The housing is made completely out of metal and accommodates a total of 8 lens elements arranged in 5 groups. All lens surfaces are fully multi-coated using a Pentax proprietary technology which according to the manufacturer should allow for a near perfect light transmission rate of 96% at a wavelength of 550 nanometers. The bottom part of the eyepiece features 28.6 by 06 mm threading on the inside for attaching various astronomical filters. The whole eyepiece weighs 418 grams, which is on the heavier side for a 1.25 inch eyepiece. It's also big as 1.25 inch eyepieces go, significantly bigger than a comparable Morpheus, for example. I've been observing with this eyepiece for the better part of the past two weeks in combination with a 12 inch f5 Dobson telescope and a 4 inch f7 ED refractor. In order to assess this eyepiece's strengths and weaknesses, I performed a few tests on nights with decent seeing conditions under Bottle 4 skies from my backyard. So how did the 5mm XW Pentax perform? Well, in short, excellent. However, there is one major drawback. But before I get ahead of myself, let's break it down. You don't have to observe for hours to arrive at the conclusion that the optical performance of this eyepiece is top notch. In fact, as soon as I pointed the telescope at Jupiter and looked through the Pentax, I knew I had a very special eyepiece on my hands. One that is capable of delivering very sharp views with excellent contrast and with outstanding brightness. No, really, the different 
Cloud bands on Jupiter were easily distinguishable, and the terrain features on the Moon presented themselves with a level of detail I have rarely seen until now. When paired with my 12-inch product, there wasn't any false color to be seen even in the most demanding situations with lots of contrast. A bit of chromatic aberrations were visible though when paired with the 4-inch SV543 refractor. But this was the telescope's fault and not the eyepieces. I suspect that the Pentax demands a premium triplet apochromatic telescope to deliver its maximum potential. The 70 degrees wide apparent field of view is very nice and flat, which manages to convey an immersive viewing experience. With a generous eye relief of 20 mm, a superb eye guard with a buttery smooth twisting mechanism and large top lens, the overall viewing experience is unfortunately not as great as it could have been. There is one major flaw. This eyepiece is very picky when it comes to eye positioning. I mean you need to maintain a constant distance to the lens, otherwise you get immediately punished by black spots or kidney binning. As far as I can tell, the sweet spot is about 20 mm from the lens. Just a couple of millimeters closer or farther away and the view becomes compromised with large areas of the field of view being blacked out. If, however, you can hold your eye still at just the right distance to the lens, you are rewarded with an almost flawless view that is crisp, sharp and full of contrast. I also noticed that the higher the magnification is, the more pronounced this behavior becomes. For example, the Pentax was a bit more relaxed when paired with my F7 refractor at 142x than when paired with the F5 Prodab at 300x. In other words, I believe that this eyepiece would be more forgiving in slower telescopes, like for example F9 or slower. Build quality-wise, the XW is superbly put together. The eyepiece feels very dense when holding it in hand, like a solid piece of metal and glass. There is no doubt that this is a premium Japanese eyepiece. Also, as mentioned earlier, it is weatherproofed as well, so light moisture like dew shouldn't be a problem. Compared to the 9mm Teleview Delight, the Pentax managed to offer similar sharpness with a significantly larger apparent field of view, 62 degrees versus 70 degrees. Contrast levels are on the same level as well, with no obvious difference between the two. Where the Pentax manages to pull slightly ahead is brightness. Here the views delivered by the Pentax were always a bit brighter. This was especially visible when I observed with my F5 DOB at 300x, so the manufacturer's promise of a 96% transmission rate seems to hold true. One interesting aspect that became obvious when observing with the 4-inch refractor was that the Pentax showed more chromatic aberrations than when paired with the 9mm Delight plus 2x Bello combo, you know, to reach a comparable magnification. Here I believe that the extra two lenses of the Bello actually corrects some of the false color produced by the telescope, which goes to show what an excellent piece of equipment that 2x Bello from Teleview is. It also tells me that the Pentax requires better corrected optics than my ED refractor is able to deliver. Anyway, where the Delight simply outperforms the Pentax is viewing experience. The Delight is much, much more forgiving than the XW. And because of this, I'm still going to put the Delight in first place, followed closely by the Pentax. Before you ask, the Teleview Delos would have been a better match, no doubt, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get my hands on one in time for this review, so it had to be the delight. Alright, moving on. 
Another eyepiece worth comparing the Pentax to is of course the 6.5mm Bader Morpheus that I recently reviewed. Here the Morpheus manages to deliver similar levels of contrast but with a bit less overall brightness. While the field of view of the Morpheus is significantly wider, it is just as flat. Even though the eye relief of the Morpheus is slightly shorter and the eyepiece doesn't feature a fancy twisting eye guard, which I really love, the overall viewing experience is still better than with the Pentax. The Morpheus is just more forgiving in terms of eye positioning. And because of this and the fact that, at least here in Europe, the Pentax costs a third more than the Morpheus, I would pick the Bader eyepiece as being the winner in this comparison, even if the optical performance is ever so slightly below of that of the Pentax. Compared to the 82 degree eyepieces from Explore Scientific, the XW is capable of delivering a bit better contrast and overall brighter views that, especially around the edges of the field of view, are slightly sharper. While the field of view of the Explore Scientific is significantly wider, it isn't as flat as the one of the Pentax. Because of the much shorter eye relief and the rudimentary eye guard of the 4.7mm Explore Scientific, I would have to give the edge to the Pentax when it comes to the overall viewing experience, in spite of it being very picky in terms of eye positioning. So even though the Pentax costs considerably more here in Europe, I would still pick the Pentax over the Explore Scientific. Even though the next eyepiece isn't in the same category price or quality wise as the Pentax, I'm still going to do a comparison to have a more complete picture. I'm talking about a 7mm XL from Celestron. As expected, the entry level Celestron loses in every single category but the price. The views through the Pentax are brighter, have more contrast and are significantly sharper. So if money is no issue, then I would choose the Pentax over the Celestron, even if it costs three times as much. I think it is a better investment. So there you have it. The Pentax is a fantastic eyepiece, capable of delivering an excellent optical performance across the board. Build quality is also as best as it gets. So it is that more disappointing that this almost perfect eyepiece falls short in delivering an equally good viewing experience. This aspect is simply overshadowed by the very demanding eye positioning this eyepiece requires. Especially in fast telescopes. But if you have a premium telescope with perfectly corrected optics and a slow focal ratio, then the 5mm Pentax might just be your end game eyepiece for high power planetary observations. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the Pentax series in the comments below. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.